Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. When the Lord comes to take his own. None of us here by the special grace of God shall be missing in Jesus name. Amen. No matter how difficult it is for us in Nigeria or for them in Nigeria. You and I will always enjoy the comfort of the living God in Jesus name. Amen. So without saying too much. He and his beautiful wife have been here before. He's from Excellent Life Church. The General Overseer of Excellent Life Church by the grace of God. He's a spiritual son to our own daddy in the house, Pastor Austin Ukiwe. I'm talking about Pastor B.C. and Pastor Mrs. Kane, the Akimbo Bola. With the Jesus welcome. In the next one hour, they'll be ministering to us. I want you to open up your hearts and listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. You're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. That, that name, General Vasya, not a big name. Eh? I fear the name I beg. Please, once again, put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. Somebody who came into this place this morning by divine arrangement, you never planned to be here, but somehow you found yourself here. It is because there is something that God has prepared for you here. So now receive it. <laughs> now receive it. I don't know what that thing is. You never wanted to come, but somehow you found yourself here. That issue in your life is settled. Amen. Wave those hands unto God and worship him. Say something wonderful to the almighty God. Is the king of kings. Is the lord of lords. Is the holy one of Israel. The I am that I am. Is a God that changes not. The almighty who was, who is, and is to come. Daddy, we worship you. You are highly lifted up. There is none like you. Blessings and honor, glory and power, wisdom and thanks will be unto you. You are the miracle working God. You are the word of life. You are the God of our salvation. You are our light. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our strong fortress. You are our high tower. You are our shield and our buckler. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads. The almighty God. Who was, who is, and is to come. The Jehovah El Shaddai. Blessed be the Holy Name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we worship. Amen. I want you to pray one prayer for yourself. When Nebuchadnezzar was brought under judgment, Daniel saw the vision and he interpreted, or he interpreted the vision to Nebuchadnezzar. That you're going to be turned to an animal. You'll be in the wilderness for seven years. He said this is the decree of the watchers. The decree of the watchers. Which is confirmed by the holy ones. There are things that God has decreed concerning you. That must come to pass this day. <laughs> watchers are there. I'm talking about divine watchers now because you are still going to take care of evil watchers. Divine watchers, they are out to make sure that that thing comes to pass. You will lift up your voice and pray that every decree of divine watchers concerning my life and my family be fulfilled this day, even now. Every decree of divine watchers 
concerning me, concerning my household, be fulfilled now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voices and pray in the name of Jesus. Liba ho shante hergadosa. Every decree of evil watchers concerning me, concerning my household, in the name of Jesus Christ. Manda hasa katigrebo shakataglabosa. Every decree of divine watchers be fulfilled now. Be fulfilled now. Be fulfilled in my life, in my family, in the church of God. Be fulfilled. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There are also evil watchers. If you study the story of the Jews under Mordecai and Haman, they gathered together, they casted lot to discover the particular day that the evil they would do against the Jew will come to pass. Because they knew that that thing cannot come to pass every day. There is a particular day in a season that the evil watchers by their divination, they look into and say, on so and so day, this thing will prosper. All the decrees of evil watchers their expectations concerning you and your household, they are nullified in the name of Jesus Christ. Church, can you pray that prayer? The decree of evil watchers and their expectations concerning us, concerning the church of God, they are cancelled. They are cancelled. They are cancelled. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. They are cancelled. The decree of evil watchers yes and their expectations concerning us they are nullified in the name of jesus yes they will not come to pass they will not come to pass they will not come to pass they shall not stand they shall not come to pass in the name of jesus they shall not stand neither shall it come to pass father we thank you in jesus mighty name we have prayed everlasting father the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Almighty who speaks and confirms it. Whose word is authority and power. We bow down and worship you. There is none like you. We thank you for your presence here this morning. You are here. And your healing power is also present. To heal every sick person. We thank you because you are here. To teach us your word. Father we pray. That as you teach us. Make the word simple enough for us to understand. Make it revelatory to take us to our next level. Let it be. The transformation. That we desire. In this house this morning. And as you teach. Your healing power that is present. Let it begin to do the healing business. None of us will live empty handed. Satan, you have fallen from heaven like lightning. Jesus Christ has rendered you inoperative. Because the Bible says that for this purpose the son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. He took on flesh and blood so that he can die. And through death, it can destroy the one that had power over there, which is the devil. Satan, concerning the church of God this morning, you and your works are destroyed. You cannot hinder us from receiving our blessings. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated in his wonderful presence. We thank God for the great privilege given us to stand before the great people of God this morning. We thank God for our daddy, Pastor Okiwe, who gives us the privilege again this morning. We greet the ministers. We thank God for their lives. Thank God for the lives of the workers. And we thank God for you, because if you did not come, there'll be no church. 
So I want you to smile to yourself first. Smile to yourself. Be happy. I say smile. You are still frowning your faces. Smile. Uh Praise the Lord. We are asked to speak on this subject. The El Shaddai. Please, there is nothing we will share that you have not heard before. But the truth is that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, your faith is going to be boosted again this morning. So please, I want you to open your heart because God is going to speak to you. Genesis chapter 17, the popular scripture. Jehovah El Shaddai. I will read from verse 1 to verse 8. Genesis 17, from 1 to 8. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be God to you and your descendants after you. Verse 8. Also, I will give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, or the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Praise the Lord. We know the story that God called Abraham, or Abram, as his name was. He had a condition looking unto God for the fruit of the womb. And God called him. He told him how to make his journey in life. From Genesis chapter 12. In 17 here, God appeared unto him again and introduced himself according to the issue in the life of Abraham. God introduced himself according to the issue in the life of Abraham. And I pray that whatever the issue in your life God is revealing himself unto you this morning. He introduced himself as the Jehovah El Shaddai or the El Shaddai. El Shaddai. And different meanings have been given to El Shaddai. All powerful, the great God, the mighty God and all the rest. But the one that is closest, the one we know very well, Is El Shaddai the all sufficient one? Is sufficient for you. The El Shaddai or El Shaddai the all sufficient one. Shaddai the breasted God or the double breasted God who satisfies his own, who nourishes his own, who cares for his own. There is no one who comes under the umbrella of the El Shaddai, who will lack any good thing. So he brought himself, he revealed himself to Abraham. He said, Abraham, or Abraham, I am your all-sufficient. I am the one you need for this your need to be met. I am the one you need. And God is saying to somebody here that he is the one you need For that your need to be met. God is all you need. For all your needs to be met. Let me tell you neighbor. God 
is all you need for your needs to be met. Amen. So he introduced himself to Abraham. What was Abraham looking for? The fruit of the womb. But he said to him, Abraham, my name El Shaddai will set to two things in your life. I will make you fruitful and I will make you productive. Praise the Lord. He said, Abraham, I will make you fruitful and I will make you productive. Because he told him, he said, you are going to be father of many nations. That is to say the man, he changed his name, exalted father to father of many nations. The man who didn't have a child will be the father of many nations. God says, I will make you fruitful according to this text and the context. God says, I will make you fruitful. And not only making you fruitful, I will also make you productive. Because he said to him in the eighth verse that I will give you all this land. Land is meant for what? Productivity. So he says, I will make you fruitful and I will make you productive. And God is saying to somebody in the house this morning, the elder that is saying to you that he is making you fruitful and he's making you productive. He's making somebody fruitful. It's making somebody productive. It's making somebody fruitful. It's making somebody productive. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, let me hear a better amen. amen. Now he says, the kind of fruitfulness and productivity I'm going to give to you is not only, or the way he puts it is that I'm not just going to make you fruitful. That is fruit of the womb. I'm going to make you fruitful in every area of your life. I'm going to give you the fruit of the womb. Because the Bible says that in Psalm 127 and verse 3, it says children are heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is a reward. So there is the fruit of the womb. So God says, Abraham, I will give you the fruit of the womb. The fruit of the womb. But not only that, I'm also going to give you the fruit of thought. What do I call it now? The fruit of thought. The fruit of thought. That is creativity. I will, go, I will give you wisdom and prudence. So that we, when they come together in you. They will bring out witty inventions. Somebody in this place this morning. Those inventions that are locked up in you. Those things that God has put in you to produce. To help your generation from this day. They will begin to find the expression. I release them. From inside of you to come out for manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. So God says, I will give you the fruit of the moon. And of course you know, if somebody has this, plenty of this, and he doesn't have this. I think you understand what I'm saying. He has plenty of this, and he doesn't have this. What will happen to the person? Plenty wahala. <laughs> so God says, Abraham, I won't just make you father of many nations. I'm also going to give you the fruit of thought. And God talked about the children of Israel in Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 16 of verse 9. He said the, the, the fruit of their thought is evil. The fruit of their thought is evil. Not only the fruit of, the, of thought that God is going to give, he said, I will also give you the fruit of the hand. So when your head is thinking it, when your brain is producing it or thinking it, your hand is producing it. The fruit of the womb, the fruit of thought, the fruit of hand. You see fruit of hand in Proverbs 31 and 16 and verse 31. Proverbs chapter 31 verses 16 and 31. The fruit of the hand. So not only are you going to have children, you are going to have something that you produce, that you create, your hand will make, that will bring money to you. So you will be fruitful in every area. And God says, it's not only the fruit of the thought, the fruit of the, the, the hand and the, of that of the womb. I'm also going to give you the fruit of the spirit, which is character. The fruit of the spirit. So, and the last one, it says, I will make you fruitful by your mouth. The fruit of the mouth. Proverbs 18 says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with what now? The fruit of his lips. So we are talking about five different kinds of fruit here. The fruit of the womb, the fruit of thought, the fruit of the hand, the fruit of what now? Lips, 
and the fruit of the spirit. Praise the Lord. So God says, I'm going to package all this together because I'm the El Shaddai. I will make you all round fruitful. I will make you all round productive. So if you have a covenant with El Shaddai, you have a covenant. No, I'm not talking about those that are deceiving themselves. If you have a covenant with the El Shaddai, then you must be fruitful according to the product of the womb. You must have something that you produce, either a service or a product or whatever. There is something that you sit down by the Spirit of God. Somebody produced this microphone. It's a fruit of the thought of somebody. That you have that fruit of thought. You have it. It's in you. Some of you have produced, you are going to produce more. Uh, your amen is not good. I said, some of you have produced, you are going to produce more. Some of you are yet to produce, today you enter into your productivity. The fruit of hand, when your brain thinks about it, in, your, in the place of meditation, in the place of studying and reasoning, putting things together, when your brain sees it, your hands will begin to form it. And they will say, wow, what a creative hand. Somebody will celebrate the work of your hands. Yeah. The works of your hands. Then, as you are doing it, you are producing that thing. You engage your mouth to declare. Thank God for the choir. They said, do you really know who you are? They address us. They want us to know that we are victory. Not just victorious. We are victory. We are victory. So when you open your mouth to begin to speak to the things that you create, what happens? Whatever you say to it, they come to pass. The fruit, the fruit of your lips. And finally, the fruit of character, fruit of the spirit. This is where the problem is. And I think we're going to talk a little bit more this area this morning. Thank God for the bulletin. The message from the pulpit on the bulletin has actually made the job easier for me. So it's a little. God wants us to be all round fruitful. El Shaddai. He wants us to be all round fruitful. But how is he going to do it? Now I want us to understand one thing. That as far as God is concerned, he has said to you and I, he has programmed it to, into our lives that we are fruitful. He says we are fruitful. Because when he formed man from the dust, man never had any word, never had any language. Man was formed. Nobody had ever spoken to him. He just stood up, man breathed into him and he became a living soul. So he stood up. No language was communicated to him. The system never had any word. The first thing that God spoke to man, the first thing that you, the system of you and I heard was fruitfulness. As God brought man up, he said, be fruitful. Be fruitful. And immediately every system in us, every wire in our being, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, responded to fruitfulness. Let me tell you, if you are not fruitful, it is your fault. It's not because God has not made you fruitful. He spoke and the system of man had fruitfulness. The first word, your brain, your lung, your liver, your kidney, your intestine, your blood, every cell, every fiber in your brain, being the first word that the system heard is what? Be fruitful and multiply. Praise the Lord. And he told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, if you read verses 20 and 21, they say, All things are yours. How many things now? Fruitfulness included? Talk to me. Productivity included? Godly children? Good health? Prosperity? Glory? Riches? Honor? Long life? Peace? Joy? Living a righteous life? Say all things are mine. Oh, you didn't mean it. Loud and clear. Let the sister say it. And let the brothers shout it. 
God says, all things are yours. Fruitfulness is yours. Now he says, how do you get this? Now I have given this thing to you. Now how do you get it? There is a, a principle in the Bible. We see it all the time. But I'm praying that God will just open our eyes to see something in it this morning. How God makes us what he wants us to be. The principle, how he does it. Let's first of all go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Very popular word in scripture. There is no wedding that the scripture will not be right. Are we there? Let's look at two verses there. 25 and 26. Now, before we read the scripture, let me explain something quickly. The fruit of the womb. How does the fruit or the seed get into the womb of the woman? The seed is planted at the, the husband plants the seed there. We all agree to that. Talk to me now. The husband, I'm not saying the boyfriend, the husband plants the seed there and the fruit of the womb comes. It's the same principle. Now, in Luke chapter 8 and verse 11, the Bible says that the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. That thing that you want to become, look at the principle here. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26. It says, husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that she should be holy and without blemish. Pure church. Blessed church. Blessed individual. Everything good about this individual. But how is it going to happen? He, he likens it to the church. Or to the husband and wife. Say husband love your wife. What is Christ saying here? This is my wife here. If you have a word for me. For example if you have a word for me. Forget about all the communication gadgets. If you have a word for me, or if you had a word for me before this communication thing, how will you pass the word across to me? Sorry? No, assuming my wife is not around. How do you get the word across to me? You speak it to me, Abby. You speak it to me. Fine. Now, this is my wife. I want her. I have an expectation concerning her. We are the bride of Christ. Christ is our husband. You agree? Fine. Now, Christ wants to bring fruitfulness that is in us, that he has given to us. He wants to make it manifest. How is he going to do it? I look at my wife. Some men will say, my wife is a terrible woman. No. But I will look at my wife. I say, she's the most beautiful woman on earth. Even if she's the most, you understand what I'm saying? So I look at her and say, she's the most blessed woman on earth. She's the most anything good. What am I saying? I notice maybe there's a little temperament in her and the temperament is troubling me. It's not making her and myself to manifest the fruit that God has given to us. The responsibility is on me now to talk it into her life because Christ is going to sanctify the church by his word. Washing of water by the word. So he looks at the wife, you and I, the church. So he speaks to you and I. Though the, the word says they are barren. But Christ says you are fruitful. Are you getting me? You, I look at my wife. I say my wife is the best woman on earth. My wife is the most humble, submissive woman on earth. Even if at home she tells me sit down somewhere there. I'm not going to say that out of my mouth. Because if I say it, I put more pollution on her. Are you getting me? If I continue to say it, I add more to my problem. So how do I solve this problem? I speak exactly what he, I want her to do to me. I speak it into her life. So the same thing Christ has done for us. He wants you and I to be fruitful. So he positions you somewhere. He gives you his word. 
and he says speak this word to your life the more you speak the word the more the fruitfulness in you manifests if you say what the word is saying you manifest what the word wants to be manifested but if you say what i am saying i begin to cleanse you if there was a sickness in the body i begin to cleanse you by your word by the word you speak to yourself if you are having one issue or the other you speak to yourself the word of god the word that you wish you speak to yourself will begin to cleanse the system within a short time the one who they said ugly becomes the most handsome the most terrible husband becomes the most loving husband the most arrogant wife becomes the most submissive wife because the man has been talking you are going to talk to yourself what Christ has said concerning you so that your fruitfulness can manifest this is it let me show you another scripture you've been seeing it you've been reading it but there's something I want to show to you here Romans chapter 10 popular scripture Romans chapter 10 are we there look at verse 10 look at verse 10 Romans chapter 10 are we there for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation now listen salvation here is deliverance from sin and satan deliverance from sin and Satan. Because you remember that when Zacchaeus saw Jesus and he said, Half of my good I give to the poor, and if I've taken anything by false accusation from anybody, I restore in four foods. Jesus said, Today salvation comes to your house. Jesus has not died at that time. So that is not salvation from sin and Satan. With heart, man believes unto righteousness. The answer to the question of sin is righteousness. So with the, your heart, you believe to the answer to sin problem and with your mouth you confess it with the mouth confession is made unto salvation salvation from what now from sin and satan fine let's assume that the problem is fruitlessness for with the heart you believe unto fruitfulness and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation salvation from what from fruitlessness are you getting me church with the mouth or with the heart you believe into prosperity and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation salvation from what from poverty with your heart you believe that by his stripes you have been healed and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation salvation from what from sickness so what you speak is what cleanses you or what you speak is the seed that you plant and you by expectation will get the harvest so the fruit of thought the fruit of hand the fruit of womb the fruit of the leaves every fruit you are looking for Fruitfulness, productivity is answerable to the word of God in your mouth. Everything that you are looking for is answerable. We call it prayer. We call it confession. We call it declaration. Whatever you call it, everything, every fruit that you are looking for is answerable to the confession of the word of God in your mouth. The problem is that we can speak every other thing for us that we speak the word of God for one minute. It doesn't flow. It doesn't work like that. But well, that is by the way. Because everybody can talk. Everybody can make confession. Everybody can call those things which be not as though they were. The point is God told Abraham. He said walk before me and be thou perfect. I think that's where the problem is. Walk before me Abraham. For fruitfulness, for you to have children, for you to be productive is, 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 is a small deal to me. Because that one is on my part. I can easily do it. Abraham, the one on your path, be thou perfect. Walk before me and be thou blameless. That is where the problem is. Now the word to be perfect, to be blameless, means to be of a pure heart. To be of a pure heart. To be of a pure heart. So Abraham, walk before me and be of a pure 
heart. Abraham, walk before me and be of a pure heart. Abraham, walk before me and be of a pure heart. Why would God tell him? Because his productivity, his fruitfulness is tied to the purity of his heart. His success in life is tied to the purity of his heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10, it talks about how the heart of man is. It says the heart of man is deceitful, polluted, and desperately wicked. That's the heart of man. And God says, if the heart of man, if the heart of an individual is not pure, if the heart is desperately wicked, then there is nothing I can do. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 says, if I have all the faith in this world, if I give my body to be born, I give all my food of charity, and I do not have love, if I do not have pure heart character, then it profits me nothing. The reason why the church is not experiencing the productivity that God has called them into, is this issue. Pure heart, pure heart, pure heart. The heart is wicked. Man's heart is wicked desperately the, the word wicked means to be malicious malicious that is to think evil he will towards somebody he thinks evil he celebrates evil in the life of people he never have anything good to think about anybody at all it's malicious he thinks evil yeah thank god for lagos people uh, you know the other day pastor said uh, he's bringing a pastor from the village. We are from the village called the city of the living God. You see wicked people in action. Weak, real wicked people. But what are we talking about this morning? As long as your heart is not pure, then you can't get anything from God. Jesus puts it this way in Matthew chapter 5. He says, if you bring your offering to the altar, and you remember that Somebody has an ought against you. He said, don't drop your offering at all. Go and settle with that person. Because if you drop it, I'm not going to accept it. The El Shaddai says, I want to bless you, but the condition of your heart will not allow me to bless you. It can't, that was the problem of Cain. Cain was malicious. We, you know, we were told that when Cain and Abel presented their offering, those days when we were younger, they told us that Cain brought bad fruits but vegetables, spoiled fruits and vegetables. But Abel brought very good ones. That's why God didn't accept the offering of Cain. But later, they, they, there was an improvement, and they said, well, Cain brought good fruits, good, good ones, but Abel brought the best. Abel brought the best, but that's still not it. The problem of Cain, if you read First, first John chapter 3 and verse 12, the Bible says that the deeds of Cain, his works were evil, wicked, malicious, Cain had a malicious heart towards everybody. Cain rejoices when evil happens to somebody. Cain celebrates when calamity befalls anybody. That was the kind of person Cain was. So when Cain brought the offering, he brought the best. The best yam, the best, best vegetable, the best fruit Cain brought. But God said, Cain, your heart is too bad. I can't take anything from you. I can't bless you, Cain. Because when you bring your sacrifice, what happens? God causes his rain to fall on whatever seed you sow and you get the harvest. God says, when you bring the harvest, because your heart is too bad, I can't take it. There are a lot of offerings on Sunday morning that God doesn't accept. Because while that individual is bringing it, the malice, the, the, the issue in his heart, in her heart, 13 years is 15 years is is yet to be settled. God had to tell Abraham, because there was an issue with Abraham here. Uh, the girl Hagar had just given birth to Ishmael and this, this Sarah came up to say drive Ishmael and the mother away and Abraham said I was, I'm not going to drive them away until God spoke, listen to your wife Abraham wasn't happy and this one now faith Isaac now faith this Ishmael, I can see him and you are asking him me to drive him away it's difficult, it was so Abraham carried that thing in his heart there are a lot of things you are carrying in your heart that is why God is not answering. That person that offended you, didn't you delete his number? I'm not going to call him again. And God says, that kind of a heart can
cannot receive anything. Cain, his deeds were malicious, wicked. So when he brought an offering, Paul said, I have exercised a conscience void of offense towards God and man. Don't let me deceive you, my brothers and sisters. You can pray from now till tomorrow. You can fast, you can go to the mountain. He says, what I desire is mercy, not sacrifice. All the mountain, all the fasting, all the prayer, they are sacrificed. If God forgave that man, if Jesus died for that man and forgave him, where are you holding him in your heart? He stands, God says, I'm standing at the shore of life. I want to make people fruitful. But I'm looking for the one that has the pure heart. He stood one day, Peter and the other company, they went for fishing throughout the night. They didn't catch anything. And they came in the morning, they were washing their nets. Washing their nets. And Jesus stood at the shore, looking at Peter and his company, Zebedee and his company. Two boats were there. The question is, why did he choose the boat of Peter? God is standing at the shore of life. Jesus is looking at everybody here. And he's saying, I'm looking for the next person that I'm going to make productive and fruitful. But that would depend on the condition of the heart of the individual. So, he looked at Peter because he he knew the heart of Peter. He saw the heart of Peter. He He saw the state of the heart of Peter. He said, Peter, I want to use your boat. This is the man who toiled all night who didn't catch anything. You know the story very well. Not only going to use the boat of Peter now, you know what he said? He said, Peter, as I enter, push me. It's like these days of plenty of oil. I know you have it here. I know it's, 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 it's flowing here. Now you, you went to the fire station, you killed throughout the night, and you were able to get, because you know, where we buy the ration, even if you are buying a 300 naira per liter, they won't sell more than 30 liters for you. And you are able to get 20 liters. And as you are driving out of the fire station, you see somebody, brother, he says, please, I want to go to Ibadan. It's urgent. You have to carry me. Thank God that I'm seeing you. You have to carry me to Ibadan. And when he, you say, okay, enter. When he, he enters, say, I don't have money. And you will stay there till I return. Please, what will you say? Uh-huh. Get behind me. Satan, Satan, you are a liar. That was Peter. It's better imagined. So Jesus said, okay, I enter into your boat. Push me a little bit. He, he pushed him. Eh? Despite not catching anything throughout the night, he still pushed. And Jesus began to preach. He didn't preach one hour, two hours. He was preaching. And Peter stood there. Peter stood. He never complained. When your boss spoke to you, what was the state of your heart? Were you not offended? Did you say, I'm going to deal with them? Or did you pray, Lord, Lord, this, these people in this office, they are troubling me. All the top troublers of my life in this office die. God says, if you see life like that, then you can be fruitful. John, let me close with John. You know John the Baptist. John came into ministry and he became very popular. Everybody listened to John. And he heard from God that he was going to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. So one day, Jesus was passing. Nobody knew him. Only John the Baptist knew him. Because God told him, the one you see the Holy Ghost descending upon like a dove and it remains there is the one. So as Jesus came to Jordan River, he saw the Holy Ghost coming upon him. He said, ah, this is the man. So John wanted to, or Jesus came to John. He said, baptize me. What did John say? He said, "Ah, now you go baptize me. And Jesus said, no, let it be now to fulfill or righteousness. What was he saying? Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah 
were not ordained to be priests. And he was going to do a priestly assignment. John was a priest. He needed to lay his hands on Jesus to transfer the office of priesthood unto Jesus. So, John ordained him for ministry. So, John was cast into the prison. Or before then, Jesus was passing one day. And he said, the Lamb of God, look at the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. The second day he passed and said, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. From that day, people began to follow Jesus. And John was thrown into the prison. John was expecting his son in ministry to come to the rescue because his son is now popular, he's influential, and he's powerful. Wherever he went, things happened. So John was thinking that my son will come, he will speak to the door of this prison and the door will break into pieces. But Jesus didn't come. Day one, he didn't come. Day two, he didn't come. Many days, he didn't come. John was embarrassed. Ah, I ordained this boy in the ministry. I introduced him. I brought him to people. He heard that I'm in this challenge. How many of you, when nobody visited you, you, you were annoyed. You verse. Make I talk for our language. You verse. I know they go to church. You were offended. God says that offense has blocked the blessing. John said, okay. I, I, let me know whether it is this, this same Jesus. He sent his disciples. He said, go and ask. Please go and find out. Maybe there was, we are still expecting another Jesus. Because this boy is supposed to come to my rescue here. But he is not coming. So, the disciples of John went to him. They said, Augustine, we should come and ask you whether you are the Christ. And Jesus didn't even help matters. He said, go and tell John. The blind see. The lame walk. What, what was John's business with the blind see and lame walk? His business was to get out of prison. But why they were going away? So, wait, wait, wait. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. And Jesus says something there. He said, among all those that are born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom. What made him least? Offense. Offense has put a lot of people where they are. Your husband offended you. That guy you wanted to marry, that jilted you, till today is in your mind. Anytime you go on your knees, so Father, don't forgive him. If you don't, listen, 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 listen. See competitors as channels of blessings. Those that are competing with you in your businesses and the things that you do, if you see them as competitors, you have missed it. When you see your competitor, go on your knees and pray God to bless them. The, what the prayer you will not pray for yourself. Pray for them first. Minister to them first. You know what God says? Those who say they don't have, the little they have, they will, it will be taken from them. If you see them as competitors, the little you have will be taken away from you. Hello, church. The least in the kingdom, what made John? What put John into that position? The condition of his heart. And Bible scholars says it was that offense that killed John. The offense. How many times? How many times? You want, to, you want to pray and you remember that somebody offended you and you don't know what to do. Let me tell you what to do today. Because offenses will come. People are, or let me put it this way, people will provoke you. Your neighbors, your colleagues, your subordinates, your sinners will provoke you. I won't deceive you. But what do you do? Do you see them as devils? Or channels or blessings, your wife will provoke you. The closest person to you will provoke you. And you must be able to do a heart check from time to time. When you go on your knees and you remember this thing that this person did is still paining me, what do you do? Open your mouth and declare, Lord, I forgive this person. I forgive him from the bottom of my heart and I bless him. If, you, if that thing comes to you 1,000 times in a day, how many times? 70 times 7. That's 490 times. If it comes to you 70 times in a day, what do you do? Lord, I have forgiven this. Uh, if the name is Sulaiman, don't worry if your name is Sulaiman, you are forgiven. 
if the name of the person is Suleiman, Lord, I have forgiven Suleiman. I have said it and I have forgiven him. In the name of Jesus, I release him. I have no bitterness against him. I have no animosity. I have no resentment. I don't keep him in my heart. I release him. I let him go. Lord, bless him. Bless Suleiman. He stole your money. You are still praying for God to bless you, to bless him. You know what you are doing? Another money is coming. But when you begin to say, Suleiman, ah, yeah, hey. Oh, oh Lord, trouble them. What are you doing? You are closing the heaven. You are closing the heaven. God says, maybe Suleiman has confessed his sin and God has forgiven him. God says, I have forgiven Suleiman. You are still holding him. The holding him that you are doing is what is blocking your next prosperity. Go and study the account of Jacob in the house of Laban. He said, I mean, read, go and read it. He said, Laban, even on a Christmas day, if there was Christmas then, I dare not take any of your animals to eat. And ask the wives, Jacob's wife, they never knew what was happening to him on the feet. He said, if I miss any of your animals, you take it back, I pay for it. But did Jacob complain? Go and study the Bible. You will never see where Jacob complained. He said, you change my wages. How many times? Ten times. I served you 20 years. You kept changing my wages. If, if animals, if lion, if bear came into the camp to pick any of the animals, you take it from me. You said, Jacob, I came yesterday. The goats were 100. How come they are 98 today? I said, ah, lions came in. God save me. God save you. You for die with the lion. God, God didn't save you at all. He said, how many did they kill? Two. Pay me back. Love and collected. But, I mean, he said, even I didn't take any of your animal to eat. You are working for somebody. It, maybe the person is a poultry keeper. You keep the poultry for a whole year. You manage the cages from 1 to 30 cages. And at the end of year, the year, 31st December, you are going. The man cannot give you one egg. The next thing you say, oh God, we cared. But the moment you say it, you block the next promotion. This morning, I don't know who has offended you. Paul said, I exercise a conscience void of offense towards God and man. I don't know who has offended you. I know some hearts are heavy in the house. You remember what somebody did to you yesterday, even this morning. You remember those things they did to you 15 years ago. And anytime, you say, you have, I have forgiven him who... In fact, it's not in my mind. But anytime you want to pray, you remember there's bitterness in you. At ah, least thing is spinning me. You know what that means? You have not forgiven him. You remember what they did, somebody did 25 years ago when you were in the secondary school 25 years ago. You remember? And you see him now. You see him in the church. You say, ah! This person say, born again? This born again thing now. Wow! Born again, born again. And you avoid him in the church. He sees you. He has, forget, he has forgotten. Ah, my brother, how are you? You remember we were together in old boys. They say, yes, how are you? God bless you. And you avoid him. What is happening? 25 years of bitterness and resentment and animosity is still there. And God says, you can never be fruitful. You can be productive with this kind of attitude. Rise to your feet. When you want to sleep at night, this I do every night. I pray few prayers at night, except I want to have a vigil. You know what I did? I did. I do what I call heart check. When I put my head on the pillow, I, I search my heart. Is there anybody in my heart today? Did anybody do anything? Did anybody offend me? Did anybody do any silly thing to me? If he did, what? What is? Where is that person in my heart now? If the person was still, is still there, I would say, I release you. Go, you are blessed. I can pray for another 15 minutes for the individual. I release you. You are blessed. Go, go and prosper. Go and succeed. Go and live a, a meaningful life. Go and live a prosperous life. When I release them like that, and I sleep, I have a nice sleep. I can plead the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, I cover the house in the blood of Jesus. The roof, the ceiling, the floor, the four walls. Demons will still come and press you. If your heart is carrying them.
But if the heart is free, you just say, Lord, I thank you. I forgive them. I bless them. They are blessed. And you are blessed them. This morning, I don't know whom you are carrying in your heart. I don't know what the individual has done that has made him to be in your heart with bitterness and resentment. You say you have forgiven him. But really and truly you have not forgiven him. You can't pray for the individual. You can't bless the individual. If you want to pray, his prayer of course is an evil that you pray. I want you to release the individual this one. But before then, if you are here, your sins must be forgiven first. Your sins must be forgiven you first. And the one who died to take away your sin is Jesus Christ. If you confess him as your Lord and your Savior, you will be saved from sin, the power of sin and the power of Satan. So we want to give opportunity to those who want to give their lives to Jesus Christ this morning. When your sins are forgiven you and you are given the forgiveness of sins, it will be very easy for you to forgive others. So you are here this morning. Why all eyes are closed? You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want to surrender totally to him and ask him to forgive you all your sins. I want you to please raise up your right hand. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ? You want to accept him as your Lord and your Savior? Is there anybody who is giving his life or her life to Christ this morning? Is there anybody? If you are raising up the hand, please raise it up very well. Raise it up. Can you please, where you are there, take your Bible, your jota, your writing materials, or your whatever, and come forward, please take a step of faith. Now, please, please take a step of faith and come forward. Yes, God bless you. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. If we are clapping for him, let's clap for him. Let's rejoice. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. If you are coming, please come quickly. Come quickly if you are still coming. If you are still coming, come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Please stretch forth your hands unto them and pray for them that the Lord will forgive them. Those, those of you in the front, I want you to pray this prayer. I say, Lord Jesus, I come unto you this morning. I believe in my heart that you died for me. I believe that you were buried for me. I believe that you were raised after the third day. You ascended on high. You are seated at the right hand of majesty. Today, I confess you as my Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my life now. I accept you fully as my Lord and my Savior. In the name of Jesus, as I accept you, by the blood of Jesus, my sins are washed away. I am a new creation. I'm a child of the Most High God. My sins are forgiven me. I have a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' name. Let's pray for these ones that the Lord should save them to the uttermost. They have come unto him that the Lord should save them to the uttermost. The Lord should forgive them their sins. Stretch forth your hands unto them and pray for them. Now, Father, forgive them their sins. Forgive them their sins, Lord. They believe in the death and the resurrection of your son, Jesus. And they have confessed him as their Lord and their Savior. Father, save these ones to the uttermost. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you for these ones. We pray for them this morning, Lord. You that has stirred up their hearts to come, to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ, we pray that you establish them in righteousness in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that from this day, uphold them with your right hand of righteousness. Let them continue in you. Let them continue to live the life pleasing unto you every day of their lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord.
Please, there are gifts for you here. Very, in fact, that's the best gift you can get today. So as, I, as you are given, make sure you begin to read from this day. Make it a point of duty that you read the Bible every day. And God will give you understanding in Jesus' name. The rest of us, my time is up one minute more. I don't know who you are holding. But the truth is that the person you are holding is not the person. You are only blocking your heaven. If I were you, without even any special ministration, you don't need it. Science is not for the church, it's for unbelievers. Without any special ministration this morning, I will from the bottom of my heart release the person and I will bless the person. So if you are here, you have somebody, yes, he walked with you, he was a driver, but he stole your car and since then you have never forgiven him. Yes, he walked with you, he walked with you and he stole your money. Yes, your wife, your wife, he, he left you or your husband left you he left you and you don't know where he is now. And every day, the only thing you do is to cry and to cry and to curse him that it's not, it's not going to be well with him. I want you to forgive him and release him and bless him for once today. Bless him and ask the Lord to prosper him. Bless him and ask the Lord to make way for him. I don't know who you are holding. I want you to lift up your hands unto God and say, Father, I forgive him, I forgive her. I release them and I let them go. I want you to communicate to God from the bottom of your heart. From the depth of your heart this morning. Pour your heart onto God. Walk before me and be blameless. When you are blameless, you will enjoy El Shaddai. He provides. He makes all the provisions. He makes it fruitful and productive. Open your heart. Open your heart this morning. And release them. I don't know the number of them. 5, 10, 15 of them. I don't know the number of years they have done that thing. There's no need for me to ask you to come forward because God sees you there and God is ministering to you where you are there because you are entering into your new phase. You are entering into your new level this morning. If you want to go on your knees, go on your knees and cry unto God, the Lord, I release him. I release her. Yes, she came to take your husband. Once more again came and he, she snatched your husband. And since then, you have never wished her well. Wish her well this morning so that your husband can come back. So that God can bless you. Yes. Pour your heart on the God. Pour your heart on the God. Bless the individual. Say, Lord, I have nothing against him, against her any longer. I release him, I release her. I release him, I release her. No bitterness, no resentment. No bitterness, no resentment. I release him, I release her. Pour your heart on the God this morning. Release that man this morning. Release that woman this morning. Release that boy. Release that girl. Let go. And let God take control. Let go. And let the peace of God come in. Thank you, Father. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. At the same vein, let's, let's point to the man of God. He that watered must be watered. And the Lord God Almighty will increase him. The Lord God Almighty, the El Shaddai God, will make him fruitful. In every area of his life. In his ministry. In his marriage, in every area, the Lord God Almighty will make him fruitful. That his anointing upon him will be on the increase. He will not fail God. He will not falter. He will not fail. God will uphold him with his hand of righteousness to do great and mighty things in his kingdom. Thank you, Father. So shall it be. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah.